This week on The Corner, we're going to look at converting pictures to 3D models without using CAD software. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, it's me, Jeff. Welcome back to my corner. This week, what I'm going to do is we're going to have a look at how to convert pictures into STL models without the use of CAD software. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is, yes, lots of people know how to use CAD software. Lots of people can take a JPEG or a BMP file and turn it into a great 3D model. But there's also a lot of people who can't. And there's a lot of people who don't have the technical knowledge or don't have the, the training in CAD software in order to do this. Myself being one of them, I am just like a Tinkercad novice. So... On my feed, I saw actually this picture over here. I don't know if you can see that on there, but it's basically a person asking the question, how do I turn this picture into a printable model? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use that picture. Uh, I'm gonna use a couple of online tools and I'm gonna use what we have in our slicer naturally. And I'm not gonna use any CAD software or anything, just a couple of clicks on online adjusting a couple things in our slicer software and we're going to see what we can come up with okay so stay tuned so at the computer now and i've quickly typed in picture to stl because that's ultimately the goal we want to get to now there are a whole bunch of different tutorials and different links on how to do all this so i'll just give you a really really quick thing basically we're going to go through two steps. We're going to convert the file to a grayscale model, which will make the slicer program easier to interpret it in order to give it different color changes at different levels. And after that, we're going to convert that picture then to an STL. So the first step, as I said, is we're going to convert it to a grayscale. So where I go to onlinejpgtools.com, I'll leave the link down below. And all we're going to do is we are going to import our logo. Um, now, you can play around with different settings down here. That will give you different looks. But just start with the uh, default first, okay? You'll get to a point where it's actually... You, you can play around with these features to see which one works in the slicer that's best for you. I'm just going to leave it like this for right now. Then we're going to save our our completed grayscale model or image. And then the second step is you're going to have to convert it to an STL. So I'm using image to stl.com. Um, and what they will do is they will convert the grayscale into different height maps so your slicer will be able to use it so here's our logo um your width your depth your height is at 10 mils right now i don't think i want it at 10 mils i think i'll drop that down to say five um because we're just going to do a little embossed logo here um Detail medium is fine. Add base is fine. Um, you can just leave it there. Add base millimeters. Um, we just want a one millimeter base, which will give us a plaque down below. You'll see that. Um, here, I'll show you that right now. But what you want to do is you want to invert. And let's convert this right now, and I'll kind of show you what I mean. So here's our 3D embossed model here. Now, it's a little bit dirty because I didn't have a high-res picture of the model. I just took it off the Reddit, the Reddit screen, which was um, compressed and stuff. But we can work with this no problem. So what we're going to do now is we're going to download this. Or we could just open it with our slicer. Let's just open it with our slicer for now. So here's our logo imported onto our build plate um, now you'd have to change to your whatever printer you would be using let's just go Tronxy for now I guess um, do these at uh, point 0.2 layer height but all you're going to do at this point in time is you're going to slice 
change our filament color while we're waiting. All right, so we're done slicing the model. And here's our preview. So all we're going to do is now we have a three-dimensional model of that logo. We're just going to bring it down and add a color change. Let's go with yellow. All right. See, that's got a nice pop to it. We're only going to do two color changes right now, uh, just so we can um, have a look at it. So we'll slice it again, because now it has the color change in there. All right, so now it's re-sliced with the color change in it. And you can see here it's going to be about a three and a half hour print. And the color change happens about two hours in. So one thing to note is on certain printers, though, you see how we have the color change here. Depending on how you um, your printer handles it, you might have to put a pause command in here, which is really easy. We'll just um, add color change or add a pause, right? So, Or whatever custom G-code your printer uses, you're going to put that in, right? So we're just going to... For us, we're going to do the color change for the printer that I'm using because I know it handles it. Your printer might be slightly different. But yeah, so, and that's it. You slice your model, and we're going to go print this. So we've just done all the stuff on the computer, and I've got my print, and it's complete at this point in time. Um, so let's just recap here. So basically what we did is we took this gentleman's photo here and we simply used a couple of online tools to get a little bit of depth and we printed out his his logo so that's really easy that's one way to do this now another thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to now because we did this in grayscale and we just did the two color I thought it would be fun to see what we can do with this. What I've done is I've taken my, um, um, an app store app and I've taken, yeah, that's me. That's my picture. Right? And I've run it through a filter. Um, and now we're going to put it through the slicer software. We're going to adjust a couple of the gray levels. So we'll have different colors and then we're going to print it and we're going to see how it turns out. So what I did was I went on my phone and did one of those quick little picture apps that it adds some um, filters and I used a filter to generate a grayscale kind of picture or a black and white picture of myself and then I went through those two websites and converted it to grayscale and then to an STL and what I'm going to do is slice this bad boy. So what we're going to try to do here is I'm going to try to look at the different levels in the photo and or the STL and slice it in three different levels or three different colors. Since it's a black and white photo, I'm going to go black or white, gray, and then black. So I just need to get above the um, first line where it um, just has the base layer which is right there. And now I'm going to switch to a gray. And then I'm going to go up and try to zoom in so I can see where the layers are forming. So you see right here, I got the eyebrows and the eyes. I don't know if you can see that. The, the eyes are going to be a little higher than the eyebrows. That's where I'm going to do my next cut, which is right here. I'll add black. And then I'll be able to do the photo. Now, I could probably could have looked a little bit further and done one more level, but I only have one shade of gray right now. But yeah, so this is using three different colors in order to do uh, a picture to an STL.
So we're going to uh, slice this and then print this and hopefully she will turn out fantastic. Check this out. That's me. That's me. It's not a lithophane, but it is a um, three colored print. Right? See? Right? <laughs> All right, so what do you say, right? Like, you know, this is actually a really cool, different technique to get used to when you're printing stuff. So you can um, try, this is three colors, as we know, um, but we can try four or five or just different ideas, right? This is the empowering thing. This actually, you know, if you look at this and you did... Um, Maybe the black um, outline as a different color, like say red or something. It kind of looked like maybe an Andy Warhol sort of print. You can do four of them in different backgrounds. The tool is there for you to use. Um, practice around with uh, some of these online tools in order to convert your images to different things. And you can come up with some really nice prints. This is to enable you to figure out a way to get from, you know, Point A to point B to point C. Like, look at that. That's got the three colors in it. I just did black, gray, and white as an example. It looks really cool. Um, it's a little bit different. It would be a cool little gift for somebody, for sure. All I'm doing is trying to point you guys in the direction for people who are not experienced with CAD to have the ability to do some of these things. Um, to do a couple different layers, to split a picture, in order to have some pop to it, to come up with um, a couple different colors in your picture, right? That's me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like, um, and you know, this will give you, hey, you know what? I can do these steps. I can go into CAD slowly and learn some more steps. Basically what you need to know in order to get to those levels. Yeah, if you, um, Found this video interesting or helpful, or you know you picked up a, a, a you picked up a trick or two with it. Um, please, by all means, um, leave a comment below if you know a better way to do this or a different or easier way to do this. Because basically, this is what I'm trying to do: the easiest possible way for people to figure this out. Um, leave a comment below. Okay, um, give me a like if you like this video. Don't forget to click on that subscribe if you're just cruising through this channel. All right, until next time, people. Peace out.